We now like to start the press conference by Minister Kamikawa. I hand over to you. I have two points. First of all, today I met with uh, Mr. Ryder, United Nations Under Secretary General for Policy, who paid courtesy call to me today. Uh, in uh, September this year, there will be a summit for the future, and I exchanged views on that meeting. Particularly, I emphasize the human dignity, human security, and rule of law, and these elements that Japan considers important. In addition, the realization of sustainable world, participation of the youth and women, importance of the LPS. I shared my views with him today. As the world is facing a turning point of history, we have to make sure that uh, uh, we, to make the uh, summit for the future uh, an opportunity to raise our trust for the United Nations and reconfirm the importance of multilateralism, and I will make a strenuous effort for that. The second matter, local time, June 11th, and look at the New York um, headquarters. The election of the members of the Committee on Persons with Disability was held, and uh, Japan's candidate, Mr. Hiroshi Tamon, received 157 votes. That was the biggest number of votes he, uh, the candidate received, and he was elected. Mr. Tamon himself is a deaf person, and he has been engaging in efforts over the last more than 25 years in, and in improving the and protecting rights of people with disabilities in Japan and overseas. And also, he has worked to protect and promote uh, rights of those in vulnerable positions, including people with disabilities in the election. It is a delightful thing for Japan that our Japanese candidate was elected. And uh, with Mr. Tamon's qualifications and uh, his uh, expertise, and also the Japan's initiatives in human rights area, I believe, was highly appreciated by the international community. That's the uh, end. The election of him was a result of that. Mr. Tamon, the lawyer, has extensive law expertise and he has a wide ranging track record and experience on the working level as well as international community. And his contribution to the activities of the committee is expected. That's all from me. Those who have a question, please. Raise your hand if you are called. Please proceed to the microphone and say your affiliation and name and ask a question. Morgisan from Mainichi Shimbun. I'm Morgisan from Mainichi Shimbun. In Italy, G7 summit is being held. I have a question regarding that. And G7's support to Ukraine, the frozen Russia assets and investment are Income is going to be used, and by the end of the year, 50 billion of loan framework is going to be set regarding the frozen asset of Russia uh, to be in line with the domestic law, international act, and Japanese government position was to consider the response. Uh, what was the background for the reaching the agreement, and what is the response of the Japanese government? And also, Prime Minister Kishida had a meeting with uh, President Zelensky of Ukraine and signed the cooperation document. What is the significance of this? This document on cooperation. Thank you. First of all, the first question, that is the uh, Russia's frozen asset use and the agreement we've reached this time. Regarding that point, yesterday on the 13th, uh, G7 Puria summit, at the summit, G7 leaders agreed to launch uh, a uh, billion loan, dollar loan uh, facility to Ukraine by the end of this year. And under this framework, RG7 will provide loan using special profit generated in EU by Russia's frozen sovereign assets as funds for repayment. Uh, therefore, G7 will provide uh, lending to Ukraine uh, as an advance payment, as a financial support to Ukraine by using the future special profit, basically. For the further details, uh, please wait for the G7 leaders' uh, statement to be uh, issued soon. Under this framework, uh, specific efforts that will be made will be worked out among G7 countries. Uh, Japan will continue to contribute to uh, discussions in this regard. 
And the second point is the significance of the bilateral uh, document. On the 13th, Prime Minister Kishida had a summit meeting with President uh, Zelensky of Ukraine, and they uh, signed the Japan-Ukraine Support and Cooperation Accord. And this is based on the joint declaration of support for Ukraine uh, signed between G7 and Ukraine in July uh, 2023. And in order to clarify Japan's long-term support to Ukraine, for that purpose, we have been having a negotiations with the government of Ukraine up to now. Now, regarding this accord, uh, will be implemented in accordance with the uh, constitution and the uh, legal uh, uh, requirements. And uh, we clarify areas of support and cooperation, including security, defense, humanitarian assistance, and recovery and reconstruction. And through this signed document, uh, we are able to strongly demonstrate the country's commitment to continue to support Ukraine. And Japan is the uh, first country outside the Atlantic areas to sign such a document. And I think we are able to uh, demonstrate uh, this issue of Ukraine is a uh, issue for international community as a whole. Uh, based on the uh, accord uh, content, uh, we will coordinate with international community so that we can strongly support uh, Ukraine going forward. Next, Yomiuri Shinbun Kamimura-san. Yomiuri Kamimuri, thank you. Uh, BRICS uh, countries and uh, G7, uh, what I would like to ask you about. On the 10th and 11th, uh, BRICS uh, foreign ministers uh, met in the western part of Russia. Uh, during the meeting, Foreign Minister Lavrov of Russia criticized Jap uh, the U.S. and uh, its allies, and also uh, Foreign Minister Wang Yi of China uh, concurred. And it seems that uh, BRICS uh, raised uh, U.S. and Europe as uh, their counterweight. And uh, relationship between Japan and BRICS and relationship between G7 and BRICS, uh, what is your view on these relationships? Firstly, regarding the moves between third countries, I'd like to refrain from making comments as the Japanese government. However, as far as I look at the joint statement published, we I acknowledge that the at the minister, foreign ministers meeting, the topic as a topic the regional. Uh, situation was picked up as a topic, which is the topic that G7 nations are paying attention to. Anyways, as Japan, we would like to, in order to realize a coordination rather than divide and confrontation through the diplomacy that pays attention to dip uh, diversity and includes Civilness. we would like to conduct diplomatic efforts to receive wide-ranging support from international community. igare san from NHK. I'm Igarashi from NHK. Regarding North Korea, according to uh, South Korea, John and Daily notes that Japanese people and North Korea had contact in May in Mongolia uh, based upon several sources. And from Japan, uh, politicians and others joined according to the report. And uh, as the Minister of Foreign Affairs, what is the stance regarding Japan DPRK negotiation? Yes, I am aware of the report. But due to the nature of the matter, I would like to refrain from responding to your question. But in any case, as Prime Minister Kishida has been saying repeatedly, in order to resolve various concerns between Japan and the North Korea, uh, to realize the summit uh, meetings, uh, we are going to pursue consultations at high level under direct control of the Prime Minister. That is our view. Hayashi-san, Kyodo News. Thank you. Hayashi, Kyoto News. Uh, Russian President uh, Putin is likely to visit North Korea uh, within a few days. It, that has been reported by the media. Now, if that is realized, the visit will be the first one in 24 years, uh, including uh, Japan, and maybe it will be an uh, impact on the East Asia, including Japan. As of now, what is the view of the government of Japan now?
regarding the situation around North Korea, well, including the media reports, including the moves that you mentioned, as Japan, from a, a day to every day, we are collecting and analyzing information with a great deal of interest. And you refer to the possibility, but regarding the possibility, as the Japanese government, we are not in a position to comment. But generally speaking, the DPRK, Russia, military cooperation, enhancement, and other matters, the regional security environment, including Japan, is becoming increasingly more serious. So we will continue to collect and analyze relevant information. And at the same time, we would like to collaborate with international society, including North, uh, South Korea and the USA. Uh, and also we would like to fulfill the resolution of UN Security Council. Orient News, as Harrison. Uh, the United States has imposed uh, new sanctions on over 300 firms and individuals in China, South Africa, Turkey, and an Arab country, accusing them of aiding Russia in, their, uh, in, in its uh, war against Ukraine. Uh, is Japan planning to follow suit uh, such uh, sanctions on those people? And uh, will you also impose sanctions on Israel, which is, not, uh, which is accused of genocide by the ICC and also have changed the, uh, legally the status quo in the Middle East uh, with their occupation of Palestinian territory and annexing illegally the Syrian Golan Heights. Thank you. First of all, uh, Japan's position, uh, I think it is important to rigorously respond to attempts to circumvent sanctions against Russia. Uh, during this summit, uh, Japan conveyed to the leaders uh, that we are considering the new sanction package, including the uh, organizations in third countries, namely China, India, UAE, Uzbekistan, and Kazakhstan. We are considering sanctions to be placed on organizations of these countries. Uh, these countries uh, target uh, organizations located in these countries and engaged in uh, sanction circumventions. Uh, therefore, we are not specifically targeting a specific uh, state under uh, this. And also, uh, for the details of this uh, new uh, sanction package uh, against Russia, uh, details now being uh, finalized. Therefore, we are going to make announcements soon. Now, regarding a uh, critical humanitarian situation in Gaza Strip, we are deeply concerned about that. I myself have been urging Israeli Foreign Minister Katz repeatedly to uh, abide by international law, including international humanitarian law, and uh, realizing uh, sustainable ceasefire and improving humanitarian situation. So uh, for the early calming down of the situation, improvement of humanitarian situation, and realization of two-state solution, uh, we are going to continue to make tenacious and active diplomatic efforts going forward. This concludes the uh, press conference. Thank you very much.